Warning, this video contains graphic images of animals in unhealthy conditions. Hey guys, Sarah here. So today I'm going to be bringing you an interesting video on all of the different rescue snakes that I've had. So snakes that I've rescued in the past from one place or another, somehow they landed in my lap and I spent time rehabilitating them and finding them new homes. Before I get started, I want to remind everybody who has the first edition of my first book, Corn Snake Cultivar Compilation Volume 1, that you are entitled to get the second edition for free. So if you uh, have the first book, just email me at sarahsnakeshop at gmail.com. I'll put that in the description. Give me some sort of proof of purchase. You didn't even have to purchase it from me, uh, but if you do have a copy you get the second one for free and of course if you do not have any of my books the second edition of the first book is available on my website again I know that it was down for a little while because we were going through and doing the updates and edits uh, I wanted to get it out as soon as possible in 2022 so that you guys could have the most updated morph information I also have other things on my website such as snakes and t-shirts and masks and notepads and stuff like that so uh, if you're interested in that kind of stuff check that out as well also remember to like and subscribe and let's get into the video. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the video. These are just in the order that I thought of them in. They're not chronological, but uh, I'm going to start out with just the ones that kind of spark my memory the most. The first one, it was a, an anorithristic corn snake named Drools. I named him Drools. Drools came from an interesting situation. There was a friend of a friend who uh, was like, hey, so I have this corn snake, but I'm moving. And so I really need someone to take the snake because, um, you know, my kid is really not interested in the snake anymore. And while we're moving, like, I don't really know what to do with him because we can't keep him heated. Uh, and so I drove to like across town to this tiny little white house that I'm surprised that any people actually lived in. I remember everything was in boxes. Um, and it was kind of a messy place, like it didn't really look like the people um, really knew how to clean very well or maybe didn't have time to clean. And so the air in general was also very dirty and musty and there was a lot of mold on the windows and stuff. And so I got this snake and they said, we want to keep the tank because we want to get another snake. And I was like, well, I definitely don't recommend getting another snake yet because, you know, you couldn't take care of the one that you have. So, you know, of course I didn't say that, but I was like... Uh, okay, well, yes, I'll definitely like take and take care of the snake. So I got him, uh, probed him, definitely a boy. Uh, and the reason his name was Jules was actually because he had a, a respiratory infection that was so bad that he was like drooling, like mucus was coming out of, of his mouth all the time. So the first step, of course, was a vet visit to see how bad it was and if we could treat it in any way. Uh, and the vet said, hey, there's really not much we can do to treat it. Uh, we will go through a round of antibiotics um, and may maybe two rounds, depending. Um, but he's like, I don't have a whole lot of hope because this poor snake looks like it's had this respiratory infection for a very, very long time. Not all stories end up being positive, unfortunately. Um, even going through the rounds of antibiotics, drools, unfortunately, did pass away. I actually had him cremated and I went to the former owners and I was trying, to, I wanted to give her the ashes of the snake and she actually got incredibly upset with me. You know, she said, well, I don't understand. How did you, you know, how did you kill my snake? And I said, well, he had a respiratory infection. There was nothing that I could do. I took him to the vet. I spent hundreds, at least a hundred dollars on both the vet visit and the medications for this snake. And um, there was nothing that we could do. Uh, and she was very, very angry, very upset uh, that, you know, apparently she she said, well, you know, I, I only gave him to you temporarily. I was going to take him back. That's why I kept the cage. And of course, I said, no, that's not why you told me you kept the cage. You told me you were going to get a different animal. And of course, in the back of my mind, I was hoping this person did not get another animal. But it was my focus to get the animal that was already there and try to help it. Uh, so that person never spoke with me again, and I don't even remember her name, and I don't even know how I would find her now. I don't, I couldn't probably drive to that house again even, and they don't even live there. But that was the unfortunate ending of the story about Drools. Uh, he was kind of the first one that I remember really rescuing, and that's part of the reason why it kind of stuck with me so much. Um, not all stories are positive, but I promise that some of the other ones in this are. So the next rescue story is one that I really hold near and dear to my heart because I actually did get very attached to this snake and there's a happy ending to this one I promise. 
So um, someone that works for the company that I work for as like a subcontractor uh, came to me and said, oh, you know, you, you have snakes? And I said, yes, I've had snakes for a very long time. And he said, well, I know someone who's actually getting rid of their corn snake and uh, they just don't want it. Again, someone who got a corn snake for their kid for like a Christmas or birthday present. Uh, I'm going to link a video up above for you guys that I did on getting snakes um, as gifts. Uh, and just to sort of have that conversation if you guys want to, you know, chime in on that video. So I said, yes, sure, I'll go ahead and take the snake. He didn't know how good or bad of shape it was in. He just knew that she was just giving it away and didn't care about it. So when I get the snake, what I end up getting is a 20 gallon long aquarium with a cage top, which was fine, but there were no clips on the cage top, which was a little odd. There was a completely empty, completely dried up, like literally bone dry water bowl. Just nothing, nothing, just, you couldn't even tell there'd ever been water in this bowl. And the snake was on scented cat litter, like scented cat litter. Uh, the snake was com very emaciated, very thin. She was a very long, big female corn snake. I actually think that she was a hybrid. Uh, and she was, she was beautiful. Uh, she had an attitude, I'll say that, but I think that part of that was because she just hadn't eaten. Uh, I tried to ask my, like, I don't know, if you want to call him a coworker, sure. He wasn't like really a coworker, but it doesn't matter. I asked him if he knew anything about her and the answer was no. He just knew that she was a corn snake and I don't even think she was a pure corn snake, doesn't matter. Uh, the food that came with her though, I did get some fro frozen rodents with her, were like kind of big rats. Like not, uh, I, I would say that the biggest one was what I would consider to be like a medium rat and I had a boa constrictor eating that. Uh, and some of the smaller smaller ones were like rat pups, stuff like that. But still, all of them were way too big for her body to take because she was so skinny. I had no idea how long it had been since she ate, but she was almost five feet long and very, very, very thin. Like you could see every single rib. So I took her home. Uh, she also had some stuck shed on her. I gave her a, a nice bath. Uh, otherwise, she seemed to be in okay health, no respiratory conditions, no weird poop, nothing like that. So I just kept her in quarantine uh, and kind of waited it out to see how she would do. There didn't seem to be any mites or any other type of parasite issues, which I thought at least that was good. To be honest, probably the scented cat litter was keeping mites away because the dust and everything that I can't, I don't even know how she did not have a respiratory infection with all of the dust that comes with cat litter. Uh, I tried to feed her a mouse and she was not interested. So then I went to rat pinkies, which she was interested in. She was used to rats. So I fed her rats. Uh, when I first got her, she weighed about 215 grams. And for a snake that's like four and a half feet long, that's like nothing. Uh, and so I got her finally to where she was able to eat like weanling rat size rats and started looking for a new home for her and very quickly found a loving family who was willing to adopt her and take care of her in the way that she needed. And of course, uh, when people buy snakes, I, especially if they're kind of newer owners, I try to make sure that I give them all the information that they need. So sometimes it's videos, sometimes it's sending them home with a, a, an information packet, which is what I did with this person. I also provided them with some rodents. I don't think I actually sold her for any money. I think that it was just like, here, take the snake. You know, I wanted her to just go to a home. And I, I, I was pretty good with the vetting process of making sure that this specific female got a good home. The next one is a charcoal corn snake named Hitch that I just got like last year. So someone got a hold of me on Facebook and said, hey, do you take in snakes? And I said, uh, no, not really, but you know, what is it? Well, it's a corn snake. Uh, we would pretty much be giving him to you for free. And he said, my sister owns the snake right now and it keeps escaping. It has escaped multiple times. And she lives in an apartment where she's not even allowed to have pets. And she has cats and dogs and uh, other reptiles. And um, he's like, I, I'm, I'm trying to help her because she's getting evicted from her apartment unless she finds homes for most of her pets. And um, I'm trying to like help her. And if it'll also help you as well, like, you know, please take the snake. And I said, sure, I'll, I'll take the snake. Like if you're gonna, if you can drop it off, I'll take it. I had no idea what I was getting. I assumed it was just gonna be a normal male or something, like something I probably couldn't use in a breeding project. But at that moment, it really didn't matter. I was like, okay, this snake is obviously in a bad situation if he is able to escape over and over and over again. Um, they're obviously not taking that good of care of at least like the habitat that the snake is in. And sure enough, the day that the guy was supposed to drop off the snake, he said, the snake escaped and we can't find it. Uh, but after like two or three more days, they said they finally found the snake and he just brought it over immediately. 
and uh, it was a big old charcoal corn snake. His name was Hitch. It's still, I don't think his name still is Hitch. Uh, I kept him for a few months, again, quarantined him for a little while. He seemed to be doing fine. Very sweet boy. Uh, it actually in really good health. There didn't seem to be any health issues at all. No respiratory issues. Uh, it was pretty much just a matter of like, they did not have a good enclosure for him and they never got a better enclosure for him. So um, it wasn't so much that he was unhealthy. It was just the enclosure and the just the fact that someone continued to allow him to be put in harm's way by escaping over and over again, like that was the biggest issue. So Hitch now actually has a new home with someone who wanted to adopt from a local shelter, but um, the animals that they wanted to adopt, like someone else kept getting picked. And, um, you know, I, I kind of asked, like, were you like declined? And they said, no, we weren't declined. We were actually approved. But every time that we applied for a snake, someone else had already adopted it. And apparently the shelter near them did not have very many like snakes come in. So uh, they wanted an adult male corn snake that was really docile. And I said, well, this guy's gonna be perfect for you. I did breed Hitch one time with a female and I'm not even sure that he actually bred to her, to be completely honest. Uh, he seems just like, didn't really care too much about breeding, which is fine. Uh, he's in a brand new, amazing pet home now uh, and has been there for about six months. Uh, another corn snake rescue story is one, is kind of two in one. Uh, I think that the girl that I spoke to that actually got these snakes from was also someone who wanted to rescue snakes maybe i didn't really know her that much but she had two normal corn snakes that she wanted to rehome she was a young girl i want to say she was maybe 16 or 17. i remember meeting her in a parking lot not again not really knowing what i was getting and i got two very special needs corn snakes one of them was a female corn snake whose tail was almost cut completely in half but not quite and there was kind of skin it was hanging on by literally just a piece of skin and bone, like barely hanging on, but you couldn't like pull it off either. I thought that maybe if it was just a piece of skin, but it was more than that. And the second half of the piece of tail was still alive. Uh, so it was really difficult to tell what to even do with her. And I was constantly afraid she was gonna just break it off on something. The other snake was a normal male corn snake that had a very severe, about 90 degree kink in his neck. The male was a lot smaller, obviously, because they've always had to feed him smaller meals. So, um, you know, he was underweight for his age because they were the same age, but he was about a third her size. So the very first thing that I did, of course, was take the female to the vet. The vet said that she was in otherwise pretty good health and they could pretty easily go ahead and amputate the little half of her tail that was hanging on. So they went ahead and did that and amputated that part of her tail so as to not further injure it. And she really just had like, kind of a stub left over, which was fine. She was a much happier snake after that. The guy with the kinked neck, uh, unfortunately was just always going to be small. There was nothing that we could do to like really make him grow. But despite his severe kink, he didn't really seem to be in pain and it didn't really seem to bother him that much. So uh, I actually gave him to a friend of mine as sort of a pet because she adored him. She just loved him to death. She wanted to hold him every time she came over. And now he just feeds on mostly pinky rats and fuzzy mice. Sometimes they'll get him multiple at a time so that he gets a little bit more food. And as far as I know, he's still living a happy life. As far as the female goes, I also rehomed her to a different friend who is keeping her as pet only and she's also doing really well. The last corn snake on this list is actually the first breeding male corn snake that I ever had. At the time that this happened, I worked in a pet store and I was a cashier. A lot of people knew that I had snakes, but I wasn't breeding snakes back then. I just had corn snakes. And one of my customers, like more common customers, said, you have snakes, right? And I said, yeah. And she's like, well, how would you like another one? And I said, well, I uh, maybe, I don't know. Uh, and she's like, my husband is has been deployed to Iraq and he has told me to find a home for his snake. Um, I don't care if we get any money out of it or not. 20 bucks is enough for us you know that's just makes us feel better I guess and I was like well that's fine sure I'll, I'll take your corn snake for $20 and she said he's a year old and he's in a 10 gallon aquarium and I said okay well I don't really need another aquarium you can keep that and maybe when he gets back maybe he'll want another snake and you'll have an aquarium and she said that was fine so she arrives at my place of business like the next time that I was working and she just has this huge, huge snake in this tiny itty bitty aquarium. She brought him in the 10 gallon 
assuming that I had something else to take him home in. Thankfully, since I worked at a pet store, the pet store did have like other things that you could take pets home in. Uh, but I said, is this, is this what she, what he's been living in? Uh, she's like, oh yeah, he's, he's a year old and he's in this 10 gallon. And of course, a normal yearling, you know what, I'm gonna go get, I'm gonna go get a yearling and show you what a normal yearling looks like. So this is Ingot. This is a boy that I hatched out a little over a year ago. And that's normal yearling size. He is pretty much give or take. I mean, you can kind of see him. That's about my an average size for my yearlings. So if you can imagine him in a 10 gallon aquarium, not bad, right? Not bad. So that's what I was thinking. Oh, okay. So she's got a snake that's maybe two feet long in a 10 gallon. Not, not bad. But the snake that she dropped off to me was like one of the biggest corn snakes I have ever seen. He was at least four feet long, maybe even pushing five feet long. And he was about that big around. Like he was a big snake and he was obviously overweight. And them saying that he was a yearling definitely did not make sense because I cannot see any possible way that you would get a hatchling at about this long and then have in one year a four foot long snake. That does not make sense to me at all. Uh, what I'm wondering is if maybe they got him like a year prior and they thought that he was a baby. I really don't know. I don't know how that works, but I, I got him and I put him on a very rigorous diet and exercise routine uh, and named him Boethius. And he was actually the original patriarch of my Halo line. I bred him to a caramel motley that was het for snow. Uh, it was kind of an accident, but that is what started out my, uh, he was actually the father of my very first clutch, my second clutch, and uh, all of the halos that I've, that I've had that came from, like Prince's line came from that. It was Prince's dad. Bo is unfortunately no longer with us, but he lived a really long and happy life. I mean, he was a really big snake who was potentially power fed as a young, as a young snake. And um, that was, let's see, I think he passed away maybe last year or the year before. Uh, so I had him for a good 10 years and uh, he looked to me to be a minimum of five or six years old before that. He could have even been older than that. He was getting cataracts at the time that he passed away. So he was not a young, young kid when he passed away. So even though he's no longer with us, uh, he definitely brought so much joy and he lived a very long and happy life. So that's gonna be the end of this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are actually more stories that I have that I actually recorded uh, and I'm going to go ahead and put them together and I'm going to make them a video for members only. Uh, membership was just approved on this channel. So for $2 a month, you could just click the join button below this video or any other video on my channel and you could get some of the member only perks. Uh, right now there's only one tier and it's the neonate tier uh, and it's just just videos that uh, didn't really make the cut uh, for posting on the channel, but uh, videos that I kind of still want to put out to anyone who really wants to see them. And the other stories that I have about rescues are actually all related to different types of snakes. So if you're only here for corn snake content and you don't care about anything else, don't worry about becoming a member and uh, no pressure either way, even if you, you know, really like other kinds of snakes, but don't have the extra money. I completely understand. Uh, it's just an option. If you do want to hear about the king snakes and ball pythons and blood pythons and other types of snakes that I have rescued in the past in their stories, it's going to be a very similar video to this one that I will be uploading sometime later this week. So thank you all for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one, which is actually going to be a brand new morph deep dive for you guys next week. I know I did a morph deep dive last week, but that was a redo of an old video. And I thought that you guys might actually enjoy a newer video with a new morph. So I'll see you in that video. Thanks for watching.